Hello everyone. We welcome you to this edition of News You Can Use. I'm your host, Thera Martin Milling, and so glad to be back with you again here at LaSalle TV. You know where you can check us out on Comcast Channel 56 or on Verizon Fios Channel 36. Today on our program, we are shining the spotlight on a young man who is a successful entrepreneur, and his name is Gregory Thorne. He'll be talking to us about how to get in business and how to stay in business and be successful. A little bit later on in the program, as we turn the page, we're going to shine the spotlight on a young up and coming politician. She just won the primary election in April for state representative in the 192nd Legislative District. So we'll chat briefly with Morgan Cephas today. Stay along with us. We'll be back in a moment. Hello again, everyone. If you just turned your television set on, I want you to know I'm Thera Martin Milling, the host of this portion of our broadcast day and the program you're watching. It's news you can use here at LaSalle TV, channel 56 on Comcast, channel 36 on Verizon Fios. My first guest today, Mr. Greg Thorne. Hey, hey Thera, how, are how are you? you? Pleasure, pleasure. You promised me you were going to come and absolutely, here you are. Absolutely, I'm here in the flesh. You made my day. Yes, A man yes. of his word. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity. Yeah. First of all, I want to congratulate congratulate you for being uh, the very newest uh, business owner on North 22nd Street in North Philadelphia. Yes. You have uh, Catch-22 Seafood. Absolutely, absolutely. A very nice restaurant. A very prominent and up-and-coming restaurant that yeah. uh, folks are going to enjoy. Yeah, but now the thing of it is, this isn't your first stab at being in business. You've been a <laughs> businessman and entrepreneur for a few years. I mean, you look like you're all of 21. <sighs> but um, Thank you for that. <laughs> but um, tell us about your business acumen and the kinds of businesses that you've run. Well, to be quite Honest, it goes back about 24 years I've been in business totally mm -hmm. and um, it, it's just uh, it, it was a knack I've always wanted to be in business I was a little kid I can remember growing up telling my mom about that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. she says to me well once you learn how to spell it and understand it we can talk about it <laughs> okay so I worked hard on finding out what that was mm -hmm. and uh, you know eventually um, <clears throat> eventually what happens is I, I me being in the North Philly area and knowing a lot of folks and growing up in the area, ran to a gentleman, and you probably know him, of course, mm -hmm. Mr. Jewel Williams, he's the sheriff of Yes. There. Well, Jewel and I, he was actually my first business venture. Mm -hmm. We had a produce market together. Mm -hmm. I was in high school at that time, first okay. venture. And I fell in love with the idea of just being my own manager, being my own mm -hmm. boss, and I just kept going with it. So it's pretty much the, the wow. uh, that's, that's start of it. That's quite interesting, yeah. So um, in a restaurant today, but what other kinds of, and you had the fruit, the fruit business that you mm -hmm. did with Joel Williams when you first right. got started. What between uh, that first business and oh, where you goodness. are today? Um, a few of them. Uh, what I did was uh, in uh, 1995, I opened up my first beauty salon, which is the unisex salon. And uh, that went from 95 to about 98, opened up another one. Mm -hmm. Long story short, there was five locations when it was all mm -hmm. said and done mm -hmm. in the Philly area. I hired a lot of folks out of Philly. Mm -hmm. Some of the talented hairstylists and barbers today, I credit them from they credit me either mm -hmm. or, but mm -hmm. had a lot of fun in the business. Um, you know, just just got, you know, I'm a kind of person, once I reach the apex and I feel I want to go to the next level mm -hmm. and change gears. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, so that's what, what you did. That's what I did. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. With maybe not the very first business with <coughs> Joel Williams, but after that business, when you decided it's time to, to move forward, I'm going to try something new, did you write a business plan? Did you have someone write a business plan <laughs> for you? Or did you just think about it and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do and just made it happen? Well, to be quite honest, that's the first thing. I did it the first way. The last thing you said was what I did the first time. I thought about it, I made mm -hmm. it happen. Mm -hmm. But that is not, and I tell folks this all the time, folks that's out there listening and watching, that is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. You want to do a business plan. Your business plan is your roadmap. Yes. If you don't have a, a, a idea which way to go, it tells all your pitfalls. You know, so it, it, it may prevent you from even going in business because if the numbers don't tell the correct mm -hmm. story, mm -hmm. you may not even want to do the business. Yeah. So that the business plan is crucial. Okay. So, and then what about the money part? Like that's crucial too, right? And I know different people do it different ways. Mm -hmm. Some people will tell me, "Oh, I saved money for ten years before I started my <laughs> business." Other people will say, "Well, I saved some money. My family invested in me a little bit, and I got a bank loan." There's like different combinations <clears throat> of what people do to get started. Here's my rule of thumb: find your right business plan, put your your correct business model together, and the money will find you. 
Mm. Don't get caught up with the money. And that's one of the things we do, especially in our communities. We get caught up with, we have great ideas, great concepts, but we get caught up with, I don't have the money. Forget that part. The money will find you. You'll mm -hmm. get, we'll get you the money. Just get the right plan together. Mm. Okay, okay. Now, um, some years ago when I was really uh, moving and doing a lot of work in video production and mm -hmm. loved it, had my own little video PR business and loved it, every minute of it. And um, one of my mentors, um, who was a mentor <coughs> actually in radio, but who was just also a very, very smart man, Kearney L. Anderson, a, okay. um, a former general manager at WDAS and at WHAT and at WURD here in Philly and at other stations in other towns. Uh, uh, just a highly intelligent man, and I trusted him explicitly with giving me advice on things. Mm -hmm. And so I was in the midst of applying for money through PCDC at that time, I that which uh, now Councilman Curtis Jones used to be in charge over there. And um, they were going to it looked like I was getting ready to get a $25,000 loan, and I was pretty excited, and I'm, I am stuck out my chest, and I'm getting mm -hmm. my first business loan investment. And my mentor, Kearney Anderson, said, how much is it for? And I told him 25000 He says, dear, how much do you need? I said, well, <laughs> I really need 75000 you know, to get everything that we want to get to really grow this business to the next level. And he said, and you're going to accept 25000 He says, don't do it. You gotta leave that money right down there with Curtis Jones because all you're gonna do is make a problem for yourself. You're gonna owe the money back, you're gonna have to pay it back, but it's not enough for what you really need, so don't take it. Mm -hmm. And I did take his advice, and I didn't take the money at that time. Good advice. Yeah. Good tip. Yeah. You gotta like get what you really need or yeah. don't fool well, around. The idea is that you gotta have to, that's where the business plan is so crucial. You at. That's, that, that teaches you, shows you the numbers, it crunches mm -hmm. your numbers for you. Mm -hmm. So if you need 75,000, there's no need to get in 25 because you're still gonna owe that money and still not be able to do a good business model. Mm -hmm. So you got to get what you get the funding you need in place, mm -hmm. and um, you know everything else pretty much will come together. Right. But if you if you because you just be chasing yourself and it's a, it's a, it'll burn you out or stress you mm -hmm. out trying to figure out how mm -hmm. this stuff gonna work. Yeah. Now so. I've heard your business mm -hmm. on radio in Philadelphia. I've heard it at several different radio stations. Mm -hmm. So that says to me you are a, a, an intelligent enough businessman to understand that you got to let people know you're there. You got to advertise some mm -hmm. kind of way. It always amazes me when I meet business people who when I ask them, well, are you advertising anywhere and they'll be like nope I, or, or they may say I have some flyers this is the 21st century come on yes you got flyers <laughs> what else are you doing mm -hmm. so are you you do the business advertising whenever you can well fortunately fortunately for myself marketing was my degree in college so mm -hmm. I understand the importance of marketing in African community African American communities we kind of don't really have that down pack yet we're getting there we're growing but folks spend a ton of money on the exterior of the business and interior but they forget about the actual marketing and that's mm -hmm. where I kind of really hit the ground running heavy mm -hmm. at you know using my uh, relationships and my uh, just you know j just being able to communicate with folks and say here let me come on yes. let me be part of this let me donate some food to mm -hmm. you let mm -hmm. let's barter let's work it out so yes. it's not always a budget involved because yes. when you first open a business to be quite honest it's tough right. so you got to find some marketing money but the idea once again you know, you got to spend some money to make some money. Mm -hmm. You just can't get around without spending no money. Right. And um, like I said, marketing is a very crucial piece, especially with all the competitive competition that's going on. You mm -hmm. got a lot of competition, and you have a lot of folks that's doing the same thing you're doing. Yes. What's going to separate you from them? Got to yeah, be consistent exactly. with marketing. Exactly. Okay. The other thing I want to ask you about is um, um, the real estate game. Which isn't a game, it's a serious business in and of itself. And I'm always hearing people talk about, I'm going to buy some properties and I'm going to turn them around real fast. I'm going to make a lot of money. Every now and then I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'm channel surfing and I'll see one of those testimonial kind of shows where people say, I made millions from selling properties, which makes you want to jump up out of your bed, call that 1-800 number, sign me up for your sure, next workshop. Sure, sure. But you're teaching um, about buying real estate and and the things that people need to know mm -hmm. um, but you're not doing it at that same kind of style that flashy quick fast talking <clears throat> style we see on some of those infomercials no actually to be quite honest let me just say this real estate out of all the business ventures I've done this has, that's been something I've been passionate about it's helped me it's, I mean, it's moved me in a lot of directions so what I've done is I've learned it from um, visual. I went to a couple of those trainings you're talking about, mm -hmm. and I noticed that a lot of folks, a lot of people in general, don't comprehend this saying. Yes. So just because I picked it up that way, and I'm very multi-talented, that doesn't mean that mm -hmm. you or him or she may pick it up. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing, I'm teaching them more of a, 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 a elementary course of it, you know, a step-by-step -step style. Okay. And I show them, and I use words they can understand and identify with, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the difference of what I'm teaching. And, um, for, sh shortly here, I'll be putting it together. The book will be out. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to release this to the world, but unfortunately, 
we're going to do the book. It's mm -hmm. the uh, Winning Hand. And it's, it's the uh, a book that teaches you step by step how to uh, become a real estate investor. Okay, and by any chance in that book, is there a chapter or a few pages on how to purchase properties at sheriff sale? Absolutely, we go Yay. through. Absolutely, we go through all the, all the phases and all the different. Uh, ways you can utilize your real estate experience to make uh, money. Some people want to do it part time. Some mm -hmm. people want to manage properties. Mm -hmm. There's various ways of doing it, and that's what makes it so the up and coming thing now. Everybody wants to get in real estate because, it, I mean, it, don't get me wrong. You can get hurt. It's like any other business because it is a business. Yes. And you're investing money, but you got to understand it what you're doing, and that's what I teach. I do one on one mentoring. Mm -hmm. I do more of a a. a, a a class with a, a smaller classroom size because people digest information differently and I want people to learn the actual concept of what they're doing. Right. When we have had some conversations as we've sat in the mm -hmm. uh, Catch-22 restaurant on North 22nd Street just sort of talking and shooting the breeze and getting to know each other a little uh -huh. bit as two professionals, you share with me that a lot of times you're up late at night. In fact, you said that's your best time to be creative. That's when you're writing. That's when you're working out plans. That's when you're designing a new menu or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard the saying that really successful people really don't sleep a Absolutely lot. Absolutely <laughs> not. We don't do no sleeping. Okay. Um, it's just the brain won't allow you to sleep. There's too much going mm -hmm. on, too mm -hmm. much creativity going it. on. And that's it. a quiet time for me anyway. Mm -hmm. I can really, you know, it's quiet. I can really get creative. Yes. Um, but uh, I think that for the most part, Thera, you know, I want to nail that and beat that message to people that is important to do the research. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go into business, if you're going to go into real estate, do the business and be sincere about it. And it'll pay you back mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. Well, as we wrap up on this segment, I think about good people know good people. And so when you walked in here to uh, do your show today and a few minutes later comes my next guest for my second show, Terrell Guy, and you two know each other from back a ways ago. <laughs> and then one day I was in your restaurant again. I'm in this restaurant eating all the time. <laughs> and, food, <by> the way. <laughs> and Fred Johnson, my accountant, I call him my accountant, walks in. And you're like, that's my accountant. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. We're sharing accounts. <laughs> good people know good people. Yes, yes, yeah. that is the true, true, uh, true indeed. Mm -hmm. You surround yourself around good people, and, and more than likely, it, it just multitude. It just multiplies. Yeah. Okay, so now, if people want to know more about Greg Thorne, want to know more about Catch-22 Seafood, or mm -hmm. more about your upcoming book and real estate and getting some guidance or support services from you, sure. how can they be in touch? My number is very public. You can reach me <laughs> at 267-349-6341. You can reach me uh, via Facebook, Greg L. Thorne. You can reach me Instagram, Greg Thorne, or you can just reach me on on the newest website that will detail all the book information, and that'll be greglthorne.com. All right. Well, I want to send my greetings of respect and love to your beautiful wife and your family. I thank you so much for coming to be on the show today, mm -hmm. and we look forward to continued growth and professional Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, opportunities that we will to do together uh, with the wonderful PR team that you have. Any mm -hmm. support that I can be uh, to you, I'm all about lifting up our businesses in Philadelphia, not just on 22nd Street either. I'm about it it's all an, around it's, town. It's truly needed, and you know? I thank you Somebody lifting me up. I want yes. to lift other people up as we go. It's truly needed. And I thank you again, Zero, for the opportunity. I think you're great at what you do and keep thank doing you. it. Don't stop. I'm going to try to hang in there. Pleasure. Thanks so much. Likewise. All right. My yeah. pleasure as well. And we will continue with this edition of News You Can Use in just a moment. We're going to talk with a lady who is celebrating a victory today. I'm talking about none other than Morgan Cephas. Stay with us. You are now watching LaSalle TV.
healthy body image means that, you know, you are comfortable being the best you that you can be. I think it's also uh, part of the, the mental mind and how a person is, uh, feels that they're perceived because if they're confident, uh, it's going to show in the way they act, how they dress. If you're happy with how you look, you're comfortable, that means you're happy and you're healthy. My ideal body image would be one where someone's healthy and happy. If you or someone you know is struggling to maintain a healthy body image, visit the National Eating Disorder Association's website at www.nedawareness.org. Hello, everybody. We are back now as we go forth with this edition of News You Can Use. I'm your host, Thera Martin Milling, and joining me by my side right now, woo, <laughs> is one Morgan Cephas. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you so lady. Thank you. you. Thank you won. so much for having me. So, Tuesday, April 26, 2016, it's a day in your history you will never forget, right? No, it is not. It is not. It was uh, my very first campaign mm -hmm. uh, running mm -hmm. as the candidate, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. extremely different wow. than just working on a campaign. Sure. But it was an exciting night mm -hmm. and, you know, a really exciting time for the district for the 192nd. Yes. We just had an opportunity mm -hmm. to really, you know, talk about a bold vision for the district and, you know, we were able to get to as many residents as possible mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know. They, I know that your, your parents, your father, your oh, mother, yeah. the whole family is very proud of you yes. and proud for you as you take on some serious new responsibilities. And I know we're talking like she's already won. But she's already won. <laughs> the way we see it in yeah. Philadelphia, this is a heavily Democratic town. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so once you win the primary election, when you're a Democrat in this town, 99 times yeah. out of you're going to win. We had a Democratic index, a, a Democratic performance index of literally 99% Democrat. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we did have uh, a Republican in the race. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a, he was a young kid, an extremely talented kid. I forget his uh, first name, but mm -hmm. his last name is Brad Bradford. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he shared a lot of really great ideas mm -hmm. that, you know, we can, you know, use when we're going up into Harrisburg trying to cross the aisle. So he was really what talented. What do you think it is that took you over the top? Was it that Cephas family and that Curtis Jones movement? Was it um, a visionary campaign planning strategy? Uh, was it all of the above? Was it just a blessing from God? What was it? I mean, a lot of people don't win their first time out. No, they don't. I mean, it was all in one. I mean, like all of the things that you mentioned, like really played a critical part. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I've laid my foundation throughout my life and, you know, my faith. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the strongest components that I needed throughout the campaign. Yes. When you would have your ups and downs, mm -hmm. you would just... And when you got them naysayers over yeah, there. Yeah, you just kind of say a prayer mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. you know, God keeps keeps you moving and puts you in a position to be successful. But also, I mean, I really had a young, very talented and ambitious campaign um, mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. um, and my campaign manager, Marcus Spivey, he had just come, in, come off a, of another campaign mm -hmm. and he just was excited to just get, yeah. you know, deeper involved. Yeah. And I really think it was the aggressive door knocking strategy that we had. I mean, mm -hmm. we literally combed the district about three or four times. And when you say we, season. you were out there too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cause you know, I know some campaigns with some elected officials where they will have their volunteers or their workers, mm -hmm. paid or otherwise, out there knocking on doors, mm -hmm, getting mm -hmm, petitions mm -hmm, from them, mm -hmm. and they don't lift a finger to do one thing. Yeah. They just sort of lay back in the cut. And I'm thinking, no. Not oh. in the 192nd. I mean, mm -hmm. we have a district where, you know, a lot of our voters are politically astute. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, they'll hear from volunteers, they'll hear their pitch, but they want to talk to the candidate. Yeah. They want yeah. to know. It's a Weather, tough district. It is a tough <laughs> district. People take voting seriously. Very seriously, very yeah. seriously. And they want to know, you know, what the character of the candidate is mm -hmm. and, you know, what their vision is and not just, you know, articulating a plan, but how are you going to deliver on yes. that plan? Yes. And I think that was really what took us over the top, that you literally had a candidate, had been through previous mm -hmm. elections, have seen, you know, candidates not do their own work, but mm -hmm. also candidates that do the work. Mm -hmm. And it's always the candidates that do the work that are able to secure the election. And, you know... Awesome. I did not mind knocking on the door yeah. or being so, up in a transit stop really in the morning. What does somebody like you in a position that you're in mm -hmm. do between now and we're taping this show 
the first of May, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the first week in May, and um, the election's not, the general election mm -hmm. is in November, and again, we're believing that you're going to go right over mm -hmm, the top mm -hmm, with the mm -hmm. election. Is there anything, can you go to Harrisburg? Can you like hang out with some already elected officials to, to sort of start getting the lay of the land yeah. and learn your way around and all that kind of stuff? So I mean, one of the things that we ran off of um, was be, being ready on day one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had the opportunity to work in Councilman Curtis Jones Jr. for about six years. So mm -hmm. I got a very good understanding of, you know, how local uh, politics, how local policy and stuff like that um, work on a local level. Yes. But then when I went to the Philadelphia Youth Network, I had an opportunity to really do a lot more partnership up on the state level with mm -hmm. advocating for different, you know, resources and dollars for summer yes, jobs. I didn't know you were there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I spent about um, about a year and a half uh, mm -hmm. there. And we were mm -hmm. able to do a lot of tremendous things, especially around the issues of summer jobs and workforce development. Mm -hmm. um, and it was through that opportunity that I really got a chance to interact with uh, the General Assembly. I mean, okay. I worked closely with uh, Senator Vincent Hughes on securing additional dollars for summer jobs last year. They had a huge press conference. Please help us again this year. Oh, we, we need will. Jobs for our kids. <laughs> we will. Thank you. You. And that, I mean, and that's important is that, you know, as someone that ran on Ready on Day One, that means to me the job starts April 27th, the mm -hmm. day of the, the election. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, getting up in Harrisburg to make sure, um, you know, our office doesn't skip a beat. I mean, mm -hmm. we're coming after, you know, someone told me just the other day, you know, given that State Representative Louise Bishop, you know, was the former representative that had the seat, you really have huge uh, shoes to fill. And I just want to make sure that, you know, when we go in there January 1, mm -hmm. we're going to hit the ground running. And yes. that's what we're going to do for the rest of the summer is mm -hmm. just, you know, really getting, you know, staff once they're selected prepared, but also hosting a series of events. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even placing some of my team in some of the elected offices up in Harrisburg as well as on the local level so we can get, you know, constituent services, what systems they have in place and things like that. So again, we can be ready on day one. You are either the youngest now, I love it, or one of the youngest. I'm the youngest in the Philadelphia delegation. I love it. Yes. Go ahead. But I mean, even though I'm the youngest, I, I'm I'm going to have a lot of ambition and a yeah. lot of vision, and you know, really lean. That's on... further reason to be proud of you. Yeah. I would say yeah. you're smart enough and impressive enough that voters in the 192nd knew. Yeah, yeah we're going to give this vote to one Morgan Cephas yeah. because she's got what it takes. I mean, that was extremely humbling mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, because again, we have a really politically astute. Just mm -hmm. you know, they know the policies, they yes. know the issues. I mean, it was several times throughout you know the meet and greets they asked you the hard questions mm -hmm. and you really had to give a solid answer mm -hmm. and you know if you didn't give uh, if you gave an answer they want to hear like how are you going to walk us through how we're actually going to get it done mm -hmm. I'll give you a good example of that um, the West Philadelphia Financial Institution sure. and um, mm -hmm. Heishimu Jiramoji yes they uh, had a candidates forum mm -hmm. and you know I was just making sure I studied because I know Heishimu is going to yeah. come with the questions do follow-up mm -hmm. questions mm -hmm. and he really did yes. I mean he really ask you know questions that are really um really uh you know important to hear answers for yes. for our district i mean it was questions around how do you with the republican general assembly how do you bring back resources into the district and a lot of my opponents they spoke of you know getting things through the legislature but mm -hmm. you know having worked in government before i know if you have a democratic executive mm -hmm. branch then you actually can bring back resources yeah. into the district right. Right. and you know he thought it was a great answer and you know it's just you know things like that and questions and you know issues that come up throughout my district mm -hmm. you know people really wanted to know those answers mm -hmm. and the fact that they um, you know voted for me is mm -hmm. extremely humbling and you know leads That's me to believe awesome. like you know I really got to work hard so that is awesome. you know we could take the district district into a different direction well of course you would thank all of the voters who gave you their oh, votes yes. on election day but uh, I heard Labor's Local 332 that they were behind oh, you they were phenomenal mm -hmm. yes I'm mm -hmm. so glad you brought that up I mean the, at the very beginning of my candidacy, I mean, you know, we had a lot of naysayers, but, yeah. you know, I really owe the kickoff to, you know, Henry Nicholas and um, uh, Chris okay. uh, from 1199C, Chris okay. Woods, okay. for, you know, helping me, as well as, you know, Ryan Boyer and Sam Staten Jr. from Local 332. Mm -hmm. I mean, those two unions mm -hmm. really, it, you it, know, it. helped me get the kickoff for the campaign. But, you know, throughout the throughout the campaign, we really got a lot of endorsements from labor unions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my mom is actually a retiree from DC 47. Aww. So, you know, I definitely understood early on. Mm -hmm. And it, it resonated throughout my campaign how the labor movement is critical 
critical yeah. to sustaining family, mm. to sustaining families, right. and you know, putting families into the middle class with you know living wages and you know protections that they need, you know, from big business. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I literally cannot tell you not if if it wasn't for you know the labor movement, mm -hmm. especially 1199C mm -hmm. and Ryan Boyer thank and you, Sam Staten Jr. Thank you, yes, Ryan thank Boyer you. and Sam Staten Jr. We yes, appreciate your help. Yes, and yeah. I know you know Sam was going through you know his right father. Again, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, right. and you know I really just appreciate you know just how committed that he had yeah. been to the campaign. Um, I mean, all of them have been committed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just really, you know, put that investment and put that interest in, you know, a young group of people that were really trying to, you know, start a movement in the 192nd. So I'm eternally <laughs> grateful. Thank we're you for bringing it up. We're going to be cheering you on and wishing you well with all that you do going forward in your career, I in politics. That. We know you're going to go far. And I know there's some people on the street who are already saying, well, you know, she's out of Curtis Jones' camp, yeah. so uh, she's going to do everything Curtis Jones says. Well, I don't believe that to be true. I believe that you are a very strategic, uh, intelligent, mm -hmm. highly intelligent woman in your own right, and that mm -hmm. you will make some decisions mm -hmm. based on what you know is right for your district, and that, yes, you will take mentors and listen to mm -hmm. their advice and weigh that advice against what you will do, and I'm believing that if there were any advisors, most of all, outside of yourself and your heart, it's going to be a Cephas and a Cephas yeah. that will be giving advice and helping to direct this new, young, bright state yeah. legislator. Go on to Harris, yeah. right? <laughs> We love it. We love it. So congratulations. Thank I'm excited you. for you. Thank you so and much. as we wind down on this edition of News You Can Use, let me just take a moment to get serious and say um, how sorry we are and the condolences mm. that we want to send out for the loved ones of Barbara Daniel Cox yes. and then of Mr. Sam Staten Sr and then of Mr. Billy Paul, mm -hmm. singer, entertainer extraordinaire, and then of Mr. John Brickhouse, who for many years was a radio voice in community talk programming at WDAS and at WHAT. And also, we want to send our love and, and regrets and condolences to uh, the family of Mr. Billy Miller, mm -hmm. uh, the fifth, who also made transition just in the last few days. I tell you, the end of mm. the month of April, was this one shocker yeah. after another shocker and and the first African-American police commissioner for the mm. city of Philadelphia, Willie Williams. So it has just been a really mm -hmm. like a tough time for people like me, old heads, mm -hmm. who knew all of these people, mm -hmm. who interviewed and or loved all of these people mm -hmm. or was mentored by all these people. So every day for the last week or so, just getting up and saying, thank you, God, for another day has been a lot to do. And then to keep it moving and to still go to work and to mm -hmm. do all the responsibilities mm -hmm. that you have, even when it hurts. That's it for us. We got to go. We thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of News You Can Use. Take care, everybody. Remember, life is fragile. Handle it with prayer.